Good morning, everyone. It's Jelani. The morning scripture came from um, the Gospel of John, chapter 11. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we come before you this morning to give you thanks. Not only for sparing our lives, but for your unfeigned love towards us mankind and not only unto us who have chosen you but for all mankind because we know of a truth we didn't always choose you and even sometimes we fall into error where we don't choose you and yet your love for us endures forever and ever and Lord this love that you have for us we want to reside in it because we know anything outside of your love is your wrath and there is none that can withstand the wrath of the Almighty God and some may ask why does it have to be so my question to them is why why can't it be so because if you have given us this maximum permissible time for all of us to choose your love, what else is there outside of that if we choose not to love or to receive your love and to show your love? And I know that when those questions come about, when we try to question in you, question you, Lord, it's not anything that you have done wrong. It's we in our error wanting not to abide in our error and into the, in darkness while we want to question the Almighty God. But if, but if we take a page out of your servant Job, we know that there's none that can pose question. There's none that can judge you there's no one that can hold you accountable for or should i say anyone that can seem to find fault with you for you are perfect and we who have acknowledged that you are perfect we lord jesus even today we ask that you perfect yourself in us so that we can please you O heavenly father all the days of our lives abiding in your love showing you love by showing love one towards another so lord again we thank you thank you for knowing you and we pray that our relationship with you grows and abounds more and more that we may know you perfectly the one true God, through you, by you, and for you, Lord Jesus Christ, who has been sent. And that, Lord, in knowing you, that we may know how to traverse this life as you have, conquering all the tests and trials, remaining strong and steadfast in love, loving one another. That you and your witness of who you are may abide in us and your light may shine in us lord jesus and ultimately also we want that we are able to shine this light to raise up the youth the next generation who brings us so much joy to see and to yeah to see yeah just to have them it's a blessing and lord we want that we who are yours are able to point them in the right direction as you have been pointing us in the right direction so when that they are of age they shall never leave you nor forsake you nor neglect you and lord that you continue to help to sustain to promote to put your hedge of protection and to strengthen marriages the godly pursuit of it, that you keep 
all on the right track so that in everything we as mankind those who love you may glorify you with our lives so lord lead us in spirit and in truth in your word this morning to the glory of god our heavenly father we pray in the name of jesus christ our lord amen all right so john chapter 11. now a certain man was sick named lazarus of bethany the town of mary and her sister martha it was that mary which anointed the lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair whose brother lazarus was sick therefore his sisters sent unto him saying lord behold he whom thou lovest is sick when jesus heard that he said this sickness is not unto death but for the glory of god that the son of god might be glorified thereby now jesus loved martha and her sister and lazarus when he had heard therefore that he was sick he abode two days still in the same place where he was then after that saith he to the, his disciples let us go into Judea again. His disciples say unto him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, and goest thou thither again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth because there is no light in him. These things said he, and after that he saith unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. Howbeit, Jesus spake of his death. But they thought that he had spoken of taking of rest in sleep. Then Jesus said unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there to the intent ye may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. Then said Thomas, which is called Didymus, unto his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him then when jesus came he found that he had lain in the grave four days already now bethany was nigh unto jerusalem about 15 furlongs off and many of the jews came to martha and mary to comfort them concerning their brother then martha as soon as she heard that jesus was coming went and met him but mary sat still in the house then said martha unto jesus lord if thou hadst been here my brother had not died but i know that even now whatsoever thou wilt ask of god god will give it thee jesus said unto her thy brother shall rise again martha saith unto him I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? She saith unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. And when she had so said, she went her way and called Mary her sister secretly, saying, The Master is come and calleth for thee. As soon as she heard that she arose quickly and came unto him. Now, Jesus was not yet come into the town, but was in that place where Martha met him. The Jews then which were with her in the house and comforted her, when they saw Mary, that she rose up hastily and went out, followed her, saying, 
she goeth unto the grave to weep there. Then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled and said, Where have ye laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Then said the Jews, Behold, how he loved him. And some of them said, Could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should not have died? Jesus therefore again groaning in himself, cometh to the grave. It was a cave, and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. Jesus said, saith unto her, Said I not unto thee, that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me, and I knew that thou hearest me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with great clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus saith unto them, Loose him and let him go. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things which Jesus did believed on him. But some of them went their ways to the Pharisees and told them what things Jesus had done. Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees a council, and said, What do we? For this man doeth many miracles. If we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him, and the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. And one of them named Caiaphas, being the high priest that same year, said unto them, Ye know nothing at all, nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people, and that the whole nation perisheth, perish not. And this spake he not of himself, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation, and not for that nation only, but that also he should gather in one the children of God that were scattered abroad. Then from that day forth they took counsel together for to put him to death. Jesus therefore walked no more openly among the Jews, but went thence unto a country near to the wilderness into a city called Ephraim, and there continued with his disciples. And the Jews Passover was nigh at hand. And many went out of the country up to Jerusalem before the Passover to purify themselves. Then sought they for Jesus and spake among themselves. As they stood in the temple, sorry, verse 56, Then sought they for Jesus and spake among themselves as they stood in the temple. What think ye, that he will not come to the feast? Now both the chief priests and the Pharisees had given a commandment that if any man knew where he were, he should show it, that they might take him. Amen. All right. I'm going to leave it at that. I said, we can all touch back on everything and do a little review. But in the meantime, anything that you want to share, you can drop it in the comment section.
or send it in to the word at eachreachone.org. And as much as the Lord has led me, taught me and kept me over the years, I will answer them according to his word, according to his principles, according to his will, and be led by his Holy Spirit. Have a blessed day, everyone, and God's willing, we'll catch up again tomorrow.